Hello everyone and welcome, welcome to another Timeless video. So today we're going to be taking a look at Yagmoth deck in Timeless format. With a little bit of a twist, using the brand new card from the newest set, MKM, called Insidious Roots. So this is a really interesting card that came out with the newest set that is kind of synergistic with a lot of the stuff that Yagamoth has going for. So creature tokens you control have the ability to tap for any mana. Now that is really interesting because we have Orcish Bowmaster that comes in to make a token. So that token will now be able to create any mana of any color. And the other card that makes a token in this deck is a Patra and it creates a 1-1 Death Touch token. That creature will now be a Mana Dork as well. And the last card is actually a land we have two copies of county garden i actually went up on a copy of a county garden just because of insidious roots and county garden is going to come in and create a plant token but what's really interesting about the fact that it's creating a plant token it has an additional benefit with insidious roots so if you read the rest of this card it says whenever one or more creature cards leaves your graveyard it also creates a plant token then you put a plus one plus one counter on each plant you control so county garden also creates a plant token and with this card now it's a mana dork but at the same time it also gets plus one plus one counter each time a creature leaves the graveyard so how do we make our cars leave the graveyard in this deck so there's three cards that do that in this deck we have the young wolf when the young wolf dies it comes back from the graveyard onto the battlefield that is considered leaving the graveyard hence it'll create a zero one green plant token and put a plus one plus one counter on each of the plant tokens you control so that's really cool and the next core is death right shaman Deathrite Shaman, when it exiles a creature that is also considered leaving the graveyard, and that'll also create a 0-1 token and putting a plus one plus one counter on each of the plants you control. So this is like another way to beef up your board, even if you don't have something like your combo pieces going on with Yagmoth or Natural Order, this is something that you can do. And lastly, we have a copy of Agatha's Soul Cauldron that can also exile a card from the graveyard, which is not only a combo piece for the Yagmoth, because if you exile Yagamoth, you can put it on any creature on the battlefield, and that'll have Yagamoth's ability, but now it's also a combo piece with Insidious Roots. So there's a lot of synergy going on here, which I think is really cool now. So having said that, we're going to be jumping into some Timeless Best of 3 to show you guys how the deck does. So let's hop on over. Okay, let's see how good this can be. Okay, so already a Womble combo here. Deathrite Shaman with Insidious Root. It only works if you exile um, a creature though, by the way. This one says whenever one or more creature. Leaves the graveyard. Right? So. Gotta watch out for that. Snow covered island. I'm gonna guess this is like tainted packed. Yeah, I'm guessing this is like tainted packed. Hmm. Okay. Might just be winning with natural order though. Let's be real here. It is pretty strong that there is a lot of option now. Could be show and tell. Seems like it's a show and tell deck. I believe opponent is dead though. If I'm not mistaken.
but this actually gave me a lot of information. Dark Ritual in that deck, though. So we want Haywire. We want Skyfisher. We want a Frillback. And we want Thoughtseize. Two copies of it. I think that'll be good enough. So we just kind of want to draw these. So when they drop it onto the battlefield, we can destroy the Omniscience. That's kind of the plan here. I think I'm going to go down on some Prosperous Innkeeper. Unfortunately, Insidious Root has to go out. I think Agatha's Soul Cauldron is meh as well in this matchup. I guess Blood Artist? In case they have a one ring, so the poor cutthroat can, can be pretty useful. Actually, I should have actually taken out the Hapatra. Yeah, I should have taken out the Hapatra. Okay. The Laporte Cutthroat still goes through Leyline. 100% certainty now. Um, what kind of deck they're playing. And I'm also going to sideboard out some, some Thought Seizes, I think. For the second game. Is it Young Wolf or Bowmaster? Probably gonna be Bowmaster. Especially if they do the same thing as last time. But I could also just be dead. If they have a show and tell here. Like I, I don't currently have the enchantment removal spells. This also might be a Brainstorm as well. But I think I should just still prioritize getting a creature down as much as possible. Okay, so that's... um. This is a Spell Pierce. So I have an idea. We currently don't have a way to answer the Omniscience, but we do have the Young Wolf to draw like 10 cards or something here. So even if they do combo off, we can draw like 10 cards to try to look for an answer. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to try to look for an answer. Come on. Port of Calling doesn't do it. Hello. Any enchantment removals? Anything? No. Okay, we got we, we we got nothing. Wait, what? Maybe they don't have it? Was this all for naught? 
<laughs> oh man. I was just freaking out for nothing? No way. No freaking way. Ain't no way. Well, that is quite interesting, isn't it? So, currently, I think, um, I do have an infinite, I believe. The problem is that they have an omniscience down, and they all also show that they have a um, bowmaster. So, if they have another bowmaster, and I cutthroat Court of Culling, then I'm gonna lose. So, so currently, yeah. So currently, I do have Young Wolf and Hapatra as an infinite. So I sacrifice the Young Wolf. Hapatra puts a counter on the Young Wolf, creating a 1 1. So you can keep repeating this. So you do have the infinite damage combo with the Yogg here, but they could kill the Cutthroat with an Orcish Bowmaster. So I think the safest thing to do here is actually Court of Calling for Haywire. And then get rid of the Omniscience. Okay, so I think that was a correct play because I actually didn't expect a Bowmaster, but the fact that they showed me that they play a Bowmaster, because honestly, like, if I haywire the Omniscience, I win anyways, right? With only one card in their hand. Okay, um... You don't want to see these cards. But we do have these cards. If these were Bowmaster, that would have been... Game over. Yeah, there's not too many people at Mythic rank at the moment. Mulligan to 5. They have a 0 mana card. This could be... A pact, or this could be once upon a time. Oh, we got a mirror. Really sucks that we have these cars in hand. Let me tell you right now. Yeah, this kind of sucks, doesn't it? Maybe I should have still played it. Nah, I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, so I'm going. I'm going to court of calling for one. To get a Delighted Halfling, or... I guess in this case, since there's two of these... Wow, they didn't even play the Bowmaster. Does that mean they don't have a natural order in their hand? It's, it's a possibility they might not have a natural order. There's a good chance. I don't think Crater Hoof actually wins me the game here. Okay, I guess. <laughs> well, we don't have to find out anymore. We do not have to find out anymore.
We got the Aatroxa down. Uh, we'll select Yogg. Wow, that's a really bad Yogg. That is a really bad Yogg. Talk to me, game. Okay, same thing, same thing. I feel like we have a bit of an advantage since we are uh, uh we got the AUG first. That is really nice. So we can just go Hapatra here. Almost made a mistake. Full control. Attack. Get an Hapatra down. We might actually be able to court up calling once again. Maybe not. I mean, we are going to a pretty low life total, but the Atroxa is going to be hitting. They're gonna have a young wolf with the um, Yagmoth. But like that's about it. Actually, I might be able to do it. Hold up. I'd have to sacrifice my Aatroxa, right? No, I don't even have to do that. Wait. Whoops. <laughs> Wait, did, did I draw both of them? Oh no, I forgot. Okay, my bad. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's choose the seven cars to keep. We don't need natural orders anymore. Maybe Insidious Roots. Another Yog. Something happens to it. Um, I guess I'll keep these, keep that, keep another young wolf, and go. <laughs> okay, that would have been a pretty sick play if I knew, if I could remember, I had a blood artist and a uh, little per cutthroat in my hand here. Okay, nice. Um, in this matchup, 
Drana and Linvala comes in. Sheldrick comes in. Pylon comes in. Maybe Thoughtseize as well. And we'll take out like Innkeeper. Bowmaster is decent, but it's not that good. I'll take out a Young Wolf and I'll take out maybe another Young Wolf to be honest. 26 creatures. Is it wrong to take out a copy of a Natural Order? I'll take out a copy of Insidious Root because I took out two copies of Young Wolf. This hand doesn't look promising. Again with Zulaport Cutthroat opening hand. I put in a copy of Thought Seizes, right? It all depends whether or not they have it though. Like if they have another Bowmaster start. And it's a pretty bad keep, but otherwise, I think could be good. But we're just going to be using the Death Rise Shaman to deny them mana. We're not going to be able to ramp with this card. Okay, they're just doing it now. Into another Shaman. Okay. Please, no natural order, please. Please. Pretty please. Okay, no natural order confirmed. No Yogmoth confirmed. This is a good sign. This is a very good sign. So, neither of those two. So, I could go Zulapur Cutthroat. That doesn't quite do it. If I go Court of Calling, I can Court for three, which doesn't really accomplish much either. So, I guess they have a Cord in their hand. Hmm. I'm just wondering if I need to kill these uh that that um delight of halfling now. Because if they put a land down they can yog first. That would be pretty bad. That would be pretty bad. I'm doing this now because I think opponent has Court of Calling. If they get the Yawgmoth down next turn, that'd be really, really bad. Okay, nice. Bowmaster. That was a really good, um, that was a really good Bowmaster.
Okay. Okay, opponent. Do your worst. But this last card is Court of Calling. There's probably gonna be Yagamoth coming down next turn. I will be responding to this Court of Calling. And then I will court calling. Because they're not gonna grab Yogg. If I grab Linvala, right? So I need them to court of calling for four first, and then I'll court of calling for four. What's this? Natural order. That's what you had? There's no way that was it. Right? Was it really that? Yeah, well, let's see what they grab. Whoops. This is a very weird inter- Oh, shoot. I just made a mistake. Yeah, I just made a mistake there. For some reason, I thought it was just gonna pop in as, um... So this is 8 plus... That, that might actually lose me the game. Hold up. 7 plus... Okay. Not quite... Lethal. Yeah, for some reason, I, th I thought the Orc Army token... Like, I forgot the the way that worked. But I think we got it. Um, let's see. If I crater hoof back, is it lethal? I believe it is. Okay, nice. That was a pretty um, interesting game at the end. Pretty cool game so far. That's funny. So there's a combo here, Insidious Root, with Orcish Bowmaster token. But... Having the Atroxa in my hand is also not good. We don't have a one drop, so let's mulligan that. This hand looks a lot better. Yeah, 
Excuse me. Are we about to get Wombo comboed? Oh no. A frickin' Shadow Spear. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Okay, we're officially getting aggro down here. A 5-5 a five, five Shadow Spear. A Nettle Cyst. Scary. I think uh, we have to go Atroxa. And hopefully they don't have a removal spell. I guess I should grab a forest so I don't have to like shock myself next turn. Actually, I have a Poseidon for that. No, I have to use a Poseidon to destroy their artifacts. These uh, Aatrox are terrible. <laughs> Another Nettle Cyst. Okay. Oh, thank God. That that sticks. So I have a 6 mana for a Court of Calling. Do I want a Court of Calling? For only 3? No, it's actually seven. When this enters battlefield, target artifact you control becomes an artifact. I mean, opponent has definitely been cooking. I'll say that much. I don't know how much damage I have, but I feel like it should be enough. Oh yeah, my Aatrox is flying, right? I'm not gonna lie, their deck looks incredibly scary. Like, it looks really scary. But we do actually have a lot of uh, enchantment or artifact removal spells. 
So, so far, the Insidious routes have been very underwhelming. It's feeling a bit slow. Uh, to be fair, we haven't actually seen this card, but I, I, you can just kind of imagine it, right? You're gonna, you're gonna want to sideboard that out. Bowmaster seems pretty mediocre as well. Maybe it's just all of the Bowmasters. Okay, insane hand. I need to be really careful about uh, the life total against this deck. Like as you, as you've seen from last game, they had they had so many five damage creatures, like so many of them. Memory lapse. Kind of annoying. <clears throat> At least the uh, Yogg is sticking, but as you can see, even from this position, I'm already at 12. Also, in this position, don't pass a turn. They could have something. Finish killing this, because if they untap, they can respond to this trigger, right? And then kill Hapatra or Yagma. Yeah, I'm scared. We need a life gain somehow. They have a blink mob nexus. I guess we can just kill it. Need to gain some life somehow. We do have the infinite, but... Okay, so we also have a pylon. Port of Calling, I think that solves the life gain issue. Stubborn Denial. Excuse me? Not a Spell Pierce. Not a spell pierce. Say what? <laughs> okay, I, I think it actually does make sense. I mean, don't I look like a fool not playing a land first, but... They definitely got me. Definitely. Yeah, it, it does make sense in their deck because they have insole artifacts and stuff. 
a pretty cool deck. I won't lie. Yeah, it's, it's actually a really cool deck. Stubborn Denial with Insult Artifact and they had like Nettle Cyst and they also had that the creature that makes uh, one of the artifacts into 5-5. So it's actually a really sick deck. It's just that this matchup, Yagamoth is going to beat any creature decks, right? All right, so I finished playing five games. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to see the Insidious Roots power at all. Um, not only were they, you know, we were only splashing two copies of it in the deck. So not only did they not show up, but the times that it showed up was during the mulliganing phase where we didn't have a one drops with the Insidious Roots, so I had to mulligan. So the deck itself is already good, but if it does show up, I feel like it would be pretty good. We have, I slotted in additional county garden power up the insidious root as well as you can see this is a plant and this gives a uh, creature tokens you control have additional mana generation so this becomes a mana dork orcish bowmaster tokens become mana dork apatra tokens become a mana dork so there's some synergies there and young wolf right young wolf can also come back from the graveyard when when this thing dies it'll create a zero one as well so these are the synergy cards and uh, Deathrite Shaman as well, yeah. So, I mean, the synergy is there. I feel like it should be powerful. Although we didn't really see the power of the Insidious Roots. You, as you can see, we, we do have the synergies here. But, however, against really fast combo decks, feels like um, the Yagamoth strategy is just so dominant for the natural order in this deck that I feel like it does kind of just overshadow the, the synergy or what it can bring to the table. So I found myself like a lot of the times I'm just kind of like sideboarding this out as a result because it's just a little bit too slow. But other than that, sideboarding. I'm not going to go into details too much. I, I don't really like talking about sideboarding too much because every game is going to be a little bit different. If you're having trouble with the uh, Yagmoth sideboarding, it's usually like one or the other, either the Delighted Halfling, Deathrite Shaman, Young Wolf, or Prosperous Innkeeper. Um, if opponent has some Ley Lines, Ley Line of Sanctity, Blood Artist, or One Ring, Blood Artist is probably the card to go. Um, if they're playing a really fast deck, take out the Insidious Roots. I got the Soul Cauldron. If they play a lot of removal spells, keep the Insidious Roots, uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron. Or if opponent is operating with a lot of counter spells, uh, keep the Delighted Halfling. So that's kind of the general idea. The only thing I don't really know should be in the deck is actually Ashiok. It's a really cool card for this format. Very strong. Shuts down a lot of decks. But usually this card, you bring it against Titan decks, right? But I feel like this deck would beat the Titan decks even without the Ashok anyways. But other than these two, I really like the Tranquil Frillback, um, Skyfisher Spider, and Drana and Linvala. You've kind of seen the power of Drana and Linvala in the second game versus Yagmoth. Although it didn't come out, right? Just the fact that I can respond to them quarter calling for four means that I can draw on Linvala and shut down their Yagamoth before it even comes down. Those are the kind of uh, counter plays you can do. You could even just preemptively do it. That means they have to get rid of this card. And I think that's going to be pretty hard. So they, they'd have to use some court of calling to like, I don't know. All the Yagamoth decks are different. So, I mean, they, they might have a Chupacabra. Some decks play Skyfish or Spider. And same with the uh, Sheldred, Sheldred or Drana and Lenvala. These two are cars that are good against Yagmoth. And you don't want to bring Pitting Needle against the Yagmoth because that's going to shut down your Yagmoth. Usually you want to just Pitting Needle the Necropotence decks. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. I just kind of played the normal Yagmoth without the Insidious Roots just because... In the total of five games that I played, I haven't seen the card once. Maybe I should have played it with four copies, I, but I felt like uh, four copies was going to be a little bit too much. So, unfortunately, just a normal Yagamoth video today. 
But with that said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys all later. Bye bye.